How's it going guys? Grimsy42 here and today I've got a pretty uh, varied supply of pickups here and this is stuff that I picked up uh, this past weekend while I went game hunting with Alpha Megasyn. Basically uh, Bill as I know him uh, came into my neighborhood he actually stayed uh, with his girlfriend at my house for the weekend and obviously he wanted to see what Buffalo had to offer as far as hunting for games and I picked up some pretty decent stuff. Nothing like, oh my god, amazing at this point in my collecting. I guess I'm in the uh, the old age of game collecting. It's difficult for me to find games. And I'll actually go into a game store and search for like a half an hour and find one or two games. So it's a combination of not wanting to pay high-end retail on some of the more popular titles I'm missing. And also that I have so much, it's hard to find things that still catch my interest. But regardless, I was able to do pretty good this time. So I'm actually pretty happy with what I have. The first item I grabbed is actually something that's just a double. It was only $4, so I figured it would make some nice trade bait, and it's a copy of Mappy Land. Like I said, nothing uh, too crazy, but for 4 bucks, I thought, you know, hey, nice, uh, nice game to add to the trade pile. This next one, I guess, is part of a, a Touch series, if I'm not mistaken, and I guess there's more that comes to this, maybe a bigger box or more components, but it's Master of Illusion. And what first tipped me off is that the back doesn't really advertise any part of the game. So that kind of indicated to me that there was something more than that. And uh, talking with the store employee told me this was part of some kind of, like I said, touch generations. So if you guys know anything about this, let me know in the comments below. And also whether I should waste my time tracking down the rest of whatever came with this or if it's not really that important. Okay, the next things I'll show you guys are... Three PS1 games. The first one I spotted on my own. The other two were recommendations from Alpha. Uh, this first one here, just the cover art was pretty cool, I thought, and it was pretty inexpensive. I think this was uh, five dollars. It's called Spin Jam, and I guess it's kind of a puzzle game. It looks on the back to be something similar to I don't know, maybe uh, it looks kind of like Tetris, except it's bubbles. I, I really can't. Bust a Move, that's the game I'm thinking of. It looks similar to Bust a Move. This next one came recommended high from Alpha Mega Sin. This one was $2, and it's Tokyo Highway Battle. This next one I've wanted for a while. This case is a little rough, but again, this one was also only $2. It's Star Wars Dark Forces, and this is a pretty cool, like, a first-person shooter. Uh, this is a port from PC, but it says this is actually a custom PlayStation Edition. So I guess it's a little different than the PC port. Next, I will show you guys the PlayStation 2 games I picked up. This first one here was $3, and I thought I had this, but I guess I don't. It's by Sierra. It's Metal Arms Glitch in the System, and as you can see, it's still got the sticker on it, and it's super, super clean. It still has whatever the extra stuff that came in it and everything uh, behind the manual, so looks to be in really, really good shape, so definitely happy to pick this up for that cheap price. This next one looked like a shooting game of some sorts. I wouldn't call it a shmup. It's more 3D, but it's Thunderstrike Operation Phoenix. Still some stickers and stuff I've got to clean off it, but, uh, you know, this another one was like 3 bucks. This next one actually looks pretty interesting, and it was only $2. It's called The Heist, Betrayal, The Revenge, The Plan. And again, it looks pretty interesting. It's a 3D game again, and it looks to be like a tactical espionage type of game. So pretty interesting. This next one was $5 and came off recommendation from uh, Alpha again. He said this is similar to Dynasty Warriors. It's a Capcom title, uh, Devil Kings. And this one looked pretty cool. I never knew it was a Dynasty Warriors style game. I thought this was along the lines of like Chaos Legion and Devil May Cry, things like that. So... A uh, pretty cool surprise, and definitely interested in checking this one out. Next, I guess we'll continue the uh, PlayStation trend, and I will show you my PlayStation 3 games I picked up. This first one was a dollar. It is a not-for-resale copy of MotorStorm. And again, for a buck, I was not going to complain. Also, it's one of the earlier release titles, as you can see with that little red uh, PS3 logo there. That kind of signifies that it was from the earlier wave. I'm actually going to try to track... At least most of those down. I'm probably not going to worry about the sports games, but at least the non-sports titles. This next one looks really, really cool, and it uh, actually uh, caught Alpha's eyes when he saw it. He was uh, pretty jealous that I picked this up. This one was $4. It's 
it's an Activision title, and this one's called Blood Drive. And I will get a little closer so you can check out the art there, but basically it's like a whole bunch of zombies and some crazy car. And I guess from what it says, you drive around and like destroy zombies. So really interesting looking, something I'm definitely looking forward to checking out. This next one was, again, another recommendation from Alpha. He said that his girlfriend has recently been playing this and she's really been enjoying it. Uh, let me know if you guys have played this and what you think of it. It's Singularity. This next one I only picked up because it was a dollar, so I wasn't going to complain at that price. It's Kung Fu Rider, and I guess this is one of the required PlayStation Move games. This next one, same story. Uh, it's a cool title, uh, at least in PS1 era. I'm sure this one is not as good. It's another PlayStation Move required, and it's Medieval Moves. So, for a buck, I wasn't going to complain. This next one, again, was a recommendation from Alpha. I already had been on the lookout for it, but I was kind of wanting the collector's edition of this, but I'll take it for the price that I paid. I think this was $6, and it's the Zone of the Enders HD Collection. I really dig the HD collections, and I've been doing everything I can to track them down because they're really usually not expensive, and I love the older games with the updated graphics, so really cool pickup there. Last one for PS3, I actually already owned the game, but I picked this up because I didn't have the slip cover, and it's a very inexpensive game. And it turns out that it was actually a huge condition upgrade also, so that's a double win for me. It's Fallout New Vegas, and that's the uh, slip cover I was talking about. And inside, it's like immaculate. I paid $5 for this, so I'm pretty sure I can get 5 bucks for the duplicate. So at the end of the day, I think this will be a pretty much a, a free upgrade. So always a good thing. Okay, again, this next one, again, a recommendation from Alpha. He uh, was doing a lot of my shopping for me. This one looks interesting. It's a Capcom Wii title, and it's called We Love Golf. And I guess what's cool about this, aside from pretty decent graphics, is you can actually unlock classic Capcom characters. They actually show Chun-Li on the back uh, in that frame, if you guys are able to see that. But Really cool, and again, this one was two bucks, so I was willing to uh, take a chance and believe Alpha that it was a good game. The lone Wii U pickup I have for today is one that I had been searching for far and wide. Believe it or not, there is literally none at any of my game stops near me. If you do like a location search, it'll search a 100 mile radius, and I've got like 20 game stops within 100 miles, so the fact that this is that hard to find, you know, it's pretty cool to be able to pick it up. Uh, it's going to surprise you guys when you see what it is, but it's NBA 2K13. And I guess this one's got a bit of a premium price on eBay. It's uh, about a $40 game. Luckily, I paid a lot less than that. I got this one for, I want to say, 20 bucks, And I had a $5 off coupon, so not too bad. Um, going for the complete Wii U set, you're going to have to pick up games that may not interest you. And honestly, this is higher on my interest than like the Barbie games or whatever. So... Uh, definitely happy to get it though, because I was looking high and wide, or far and wide, high, far and wide, a lot of places. But I think the only, the only real, like, I don't want to even say hard to get game, but the only game that's really been eluding me that I've been looking for is Pikmin 3. And now that they released the Nintendo Selects version, GameStop lowered the price of the, of it in general to like $19 used. So I know I'll eventually find one now. There's already like three or four that have just popped up in my district use. So that's something that I can finally get without having to pay like 40 to $60. I uh, actually made out by holding out in that case. So looks like it paid off. The last couple games I'm going to show you guys here are the Saturn games I picked up. And Saturn is another system I'm going to try to get complete. And I don't really mean try. I, obviously, I'll complete it. It's just a matter of when. But... I always keep my eyes open for games that are under $10 and have clean cases. Those are two things that are critical when you're trying to complete a system. You obviously don't want to go out and pay retail for everything. And one thing that, in completing my NES collection, was very helpful was picking up the cheaper games, taking advantage of sales, and doing everything you can to save every penny because those heavier hitters like Panic Restaurant or Chippendale 2 or Power Blade, those are going to drain your bank account really fast, so you want to try to save as much money on the fillers as possible. Try not to pay retail, because they're common and they're everywhere. Saturn's really not that common, though. Like, the stores in my area will have, like, five or six Saturn games, and most of them have been there forever and are missing a manual or the cases are cracked. But all of these were really clean, so I was happy to get these. This one here was $7. It's a title by Idios, and it's called Machine Head. 
and basically it's a a 3D flying shooting game of sorts, and I guess the pretense is that the world is infected with a deadly man-made virus. Guess who's the cure? So, uh, I guess at the time, according to this, it had good graphics, so Saturn really wasn't known for 3D, but I'll give it a shot. This next one here, I guess had been in the store for a while. It's pretty clean, and I'm happy to get it uh, just because of the condition alone. It's Shanghai Triple Threat. And I guess it's like playing solitaire and mahjong and things like that. So not really something I'll jump into, but still cool to find it, get it off the list, and in such good shape. I mean, it's as you can see, it's pretty blingy. This next one is a Vic Tokai game, and it looks like a 3D fighter with pretty crappy graphics, but still, Vic Tokai is a cool publisher. At least I like them in the uh, the NES generation and, and Super Nintendo. So. Cool to get another game by them, and it's called Criticom. So, again, this one was under 10 bucks. also. I think this one was 8 This last one here I paid 10 for prior to any coupons or discounts that I used. Looks like a 3D shooter, and it's Congo the Movie. So, again, cool just to get another title that I, I really don't ever see. Uh, I'm not going to say this is rare. It's not even that expensive, but I just have never run into it in the wild. So cool to get that out of the way, and always nice to have a nice little stack of Saturn games to add to the collection. I'm getting up to the point where I'm, I'm between 65 and 70 games for the Saturn right now, and with the exception of just a small amount, I've got most of the rare ones. I've got the Panzer Dragoon Saga, all the working design games except for Sega Ages. I think the big ones I'm missing offhand are Burning Rangers, um, House of the Dead, and the Netlink version of Daytona USA. I'm not sure how much I really care. I mean, technically it's a different game, but it's literally no different than the uh, the Daytona USA, I think it's called Championship Edition, that's out because the Sega Netlink service is no longer available. So there's really, other than a little not for resale and a black and white manual included, there's really no difference. So I'll have to really think about whether or not I want to take the plunge on that because that's like a $1,200 game. So. I guess maybe when I get to the end of the rainbow for Saturn and that's all that's left, I'll, I'll weigh my options then. But for now, it's not something I'm really worried about. But anyways, guys, that's going to wrap up this pick pickup video. I appreciate you guys watching and sticking around to the end. Like I said, let me know what some things you've been finding out recently. And if you guys have any questions, down in the comment section is where they go. So appreciate you watching. Take care.